everyone and welcome to Slinger's Home Court. I'm your host Ash and I'll be joining you today as we dive into what I would say the Singapore Slingers have been up to during this very long break from the basketball action. We'll also have some updated news about the expected resumption of the ASEAN Basketball League as well as a preview of the Slingers' upcoming trip to Bali for the ABL 3x3 basketball tournament the Slingers will be participating in between 15 to 18 of April this year. And last but not least, of course, we're going to talk about Slingers and Inside Look, a 10 part mini series looking at the Singapore Slingers' first 15 years. So let's get straight into it. Joining us today is none other than, of course, Slingers forward Delvin Go and Slingers GM Michael Johnson to fill us on about what the Slingers have been up to. And of course, let us know what the Slingers will be up to moving forward. Now, of course, Delvin, let me go to you first. It's been a long time since we've seen you on the court. You know, can you tell me what you've been up to as well with the Slingers and personally as well? I think for these past two years, uh, Slingers have been uh, very supportive of us, you know, still getting us to train individual trainings, you know, because things like that, you don't, you don't take it for granted because you got to work on your individual skills as well. It's not always about the team aspect of things, but the individual aspects of you know, putting in the work as individuals to come together as a team. So Slingers have been supporting us in a way that uh, we can still play basketball and still make a living out of it. So yeah, it's been good. Great to hear that, uh, Delvin. Um, and of course, for you, Michael, um, you know, we, we really hope to see some of the players back in action really soon. But perhaps from your perspective as well, um, what have you been doing to keep the Slingers alive during this, uh, this pandemic? Yeah, well, it's been very, very difficult um, and frustrating. Uh, obviously, without playing, then sources of revenue are, are, are very limited. Um, and as Delvin had said, um, we've been able to uh, do a lot more individual stuff, which is great. That's the upside of it. But there's only so much you can do. You're obviously training to play, not the other way around. So it's at times frustrating for the players as it is for the coaches. Um, but um, we, we've had some fun as well. We've done some documentaries and the mini series, and we've had a couple of uh, associations with some big brands. Um, so the guys have had a bit of fun with that as well. So we've tried to keep the brand out there and alive and uh, just try to survive until COVID allows us to travel and start playing again. And speaking of, of what you guys have been up to, um, you know, with the ABL being dormant, you know, for the last two years, um, and of course, I think it was since March of 2020, right? Uh, I believe, however, it's coming back this year, um, the ASEAN Basketball League. So can you m- maybe share more details about that, Mike? Yeah, well, we... we um... We're hoping to start restart it in uh, September. Obviously, the Sea Games are in May, so you know we, we yeah. can't start too early. We still have a, a situation where some of our uh, teams uh, in places like Hong Kong, uh, Taiwan, and China are still pretty heavily locked down. So there's a possibility that home and away might not be uh, able to happen, but we're still looking at that. If that can't happen, we're looking at having uh, three to four rolling tournaments. So you know, uh, some of the places like Singapore, Vietnam, uh, Indonesia, maybe Thailand that want to host a week or two of of tournaments. So we'll have all the teams fly in there uh, into a country that doesn't have quarantine. And then um, we'll we'll play sort of round robin and whatever and get as many games as we can and then carry those sort of uh, wins and losses over to the next to the next tournament um, and then at the end of it to, to get a champion. So it'll either be that way, we, we play in September or it'll be, if we can, back to regular home and away. It just depends on how the virus uh, breaks down and, and how travel uh, constraints and quarantines, how, how they pass by uh, come September. And speaking of travelling, um, you know, you guys might, or rather you guys will be joining the ABL uh, 3x3 tournament in Bali, right, in Indonesia. So can you tell me more about this? Yeah, well, we've been talking about this for six months. Uh, I know I've been trying to update the players, that, you know, because they're, they're always asking, when are we going to play? When are we going to play? So, <laughs> you know, for the last six months, the league's been looking at it. Again, we've had to uh, uh, follow the, the travel restrictions and so forth. And as soon as it looked like opening up, we, we jumped at it. There's a, there's a new franchise in Indonesia and they've been keen to uh, host some sort of a tournament, an ABL tournament. So, we saw it as a great opportunity to, you know, get out, get the brand back out there, get some ABL teams uh, involved. And three-on-three three is now a big part of the landscape. It's now a, a, an Olympics and a world championship sport. So, and there's a bit of a focus uh, in Singapore on three-on-three on three X3. Three. They've actually secured the FIBA Asia uh, championships for national teams that'll be here in July in Singapore. 
So we saw it as a great opportunity uh, and also a, a, a possibly a, a lead-up tournament for national teams for the SEA Games as well. So we'll all, there's about 10 teams uh, in the men's, men's division, 3x3, and they're not all ABL teams. There's a few ABL teams, uh, an Indian team, uh, some teams from the Philippines, Thailand, Malaysia, so forth. So it, it'll be interesting. It'll be a little bit of a different breakdown than the guys are, are used to, but I think that'll be all fun, and, and I think they're really looking forward to some competition. Hey, Stephen, Delvin, I want to go to you right now. I mean, you must be looking forward to, you know, this year, ahead, especially with sport coming back and perhaps, you know, the opportunity to travel again and, and, and play in, in a really exciting tournament. So, um, can you share with me your thoughts on that? Um, we actually been to Malaysia, like, last month uh, with the national team. And uh, I think that's something, you know, great to look forward to, you know, especially after two years of not traveling and especially traveling for games, I think it's something that we might be rusty at the beginning, but we're just, these two years, we, we're just trying to get ourselves ready. You know, although we didn't play, but we, we, we're just trying to get ourselves ready and for any competition that's coming back. So for this party, three on three, I think it's really putting the ABL back on the map, you know, letting the ABL fans know that, you know, the ABL is coming back. It's something that you can look forward to. And with this three on three, it's something, a small step that ABL is trying to do which is good. I mean, like, rather than not doing anything, uh, having a competition for us as players is something that we always look forward to. And uh, we just can't wait for, you know, what's coming up in the near future. Have you missed your teammates? I mean, you know, in the last few years that you haven't gotten the chance to go for match days, you know, and travel with them or... <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, definitely you miss the travelling part. You miss, you know, yeah. um, the chance to compete as a team together because uh, for Singapore Slingers it's, we are based very importance of family family is like a word to us and um, our team is like a family and you know sometimes we don't get to see a lot of the guys even though yep. the national team we get to see all the local guys but we don't get to see like that like X you know he has yep. been in um, Taiwan to play and um, we just can't wait to you know all come together again you know going at it again hungry for that championship once again so yep yeah, I mean, as you said, hopefully, you know, the ABL as well as the, um, you know, the, the ASEAN Basketball League as well as the, the Balinese, um, or rather the tournament that you guys are going to in Bali is going to be a fantastic start to what's to come. And I'm sure the Slingers fans are looking forward to, you know, seeing you guys back, you know, on the court again. I really can't wait to see you guys back on the court. Um, and speaking of that, um, while we wait for your much-anticipated return to action, we'd like to share with you out there watching now a 10-part mini-series called The Slingers, an inside look. In Singapore's short history, the tiny island state had never before had a professional basketball team or a professional basketball league to compete in. Having a professional team anchored in Singapore had been an idea the Singapore Sports Council had harboured for some time. The Slingers roared onto the scene with a win in their opening NBL game. But the journey has been a roller coaster over the first 15 years. Mounting costs and an arduous travel schedule competing in an Australian based league led to a shift in 2009 from the NBL to a newly established ASEAN Basketball League. Through their move from the Australian NBL to the Southeast Asian-based ABL, a change in home venue from the Singapore Indoor Stadium to OCBC Arena, the Singapore Slingers have persevered and the organisation has risen to the challenges. The Slingers have built a strong supporter base and had many unique experiences during their first 15 years. After a tough adjustment to a new league and building up a mainly Singaporean roster, the Slingers began their 2015 ABL season in search of the club's first trip to the ABL Finals. The organization had established a professional culture and a defensive focus. Emerging from the pack, mostly undermanned and overmatched, the Slingers would forge their way to three ABL Final Series appearances in four seasons, something no other ABL team has achieved. Over to Darren 
Young, and you can see that coming up to go. He's just not finishing. Desmond Doe for Alexander drives. Fields doesn't dunk. <laughs> Get the shot away, Alexander. Well, Desmond Doe to Fields. That's another 50-50 ball. Another Singapore big play. Alexander to Han Bin. Will shoot the basketball. Bassett wants a foul. Young on the drive to Delvin goal for two. This 10 part series will capture all the excitement, highlights, interviews, and all the raw emotions from all three final series. It'll feature the Slingers' community engagements, big brand promotions, and much more, all on Slingers and Inside Look. Well, the Slingers and Inside Look takes us through the first 15 years of our beloved Singapore Slingers. From game highlights to interviews, it gives us a peek into the past and into the future. Joining Delvin and MJ is one of the Slingers' longest-serving world imports and fan favourite, Xavier Alexander. How are you, Xavier? Hello, hello, hello. How is everything? Um, thanks for joining us on the show, you know. We understand that you're currently playing in the T1 League in Taiwan. So how is that going? Uh, it's going good. Uh, there's definitely an adjustment for me uh, with the import rules. Um, they're just different from the ABL, but uh, it's basketball. After, after not playing for two years, I uh, was kind of just looking for any type of competition. So um, happy that I, I landed here, uh, still close to uh, Singapore and still talk to you know MJ all the time um, about the ABL start and stuff like that. So uh, really enjoying myself. Uh, my team's number one currently going into the playoffs. So uh, hopefully I can you know get a championship here as well. Nice. And and speaking of that, you know you mentioned you're still quite close to Singapore Slingers and, and MJ. In fact. Um, you know, you sent, um, you spent five uh, successive seasons, right, uh, with the Slingers. So, did it feel strange to you, you know, um, playing with another team or with your new team? Uh, it's definitely different for me. Uh, just, um, like Delvin said earlier, you know, our team being a family, uh, just knowing these guys and, uh, you know, knowing them like brothers, then, you know, just switching it up, new coach, new management, new, new teammates and stuff like that, uh, it's definitely different for me, but um, uh, it's all basketball. So, so yeah, uh, just it was an adjustment for me, but uh, definitely enjoying myself. <laughs> it's the life of a baller, as they would say. You know, Delvin, I need to ask you: Do you, did you miss? Do you miss having Xavier around? Um, you know, since he's left. Um, to be honest, you miss the competitiveness in him. Definitely, you know him giving us trouble. <laughs> you know, with, his long, with his physics and with his long arms and all that you know it gives us a different level of competition right there so we definitely miss him for that of, of course all the laughters and all the meals that we had all the chats that we had of course we miss him you know we certainly hope that when the ABR restarts that we will see you actually doing your thing you know, for the uh, not just for the slingers um, Delvin but you know um, you know in general just the fan engagement and seeing the fans right Delvin I mean when, when the league starts is that what you're looking forward to? A hundred percent, like um, a part of us, we play for self and another part of it, we play for the organization and another part of it is a big part is the fans. Like we want to see the fans out there and uh, the fans have been, you know, supporting us, you know, from the early days all the way to now to sow out crowds and all that. So we have really built that, you know, that family with the fans as well and engaging with them is one thing that um, is a big part for us as well. And every time after the game, you know, even we win, we lose, they will be there for us. So, yeah, we're definitely looking forward to seeing them again. So, back to you, Xavier. I mean, have you missed playing in front of a crowd, you know, the Singapore fans? And, and how has it been like for you uh, playing in front of, you know, I would say a, a less sizable crowd? Uh, yeah, for me, I, I definitely miss, uh, you know, the Singapore home crowd and uh, the, the ones that would travel to Malaysia and Hong Kong to uh, support the team. Uh, Taiwan, it's, it's been a little difficult here. Um, we've had crowds, but there's also been periods where um, we've had no fans um, and you having to play and get excited and get up for the game uh, with nobody in the stands. So um, that's something that we've had to make adjustments uh, here as well. And uh, we actually didn't win none of the games with no fans. So. Oh. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm definitely a player that likes to play in front of fans and 
um, like to, you know, hear the crowd, you know, cheering me on or booing me with whatever they prefer. <laughs> so now that I guess I go to the trick question, Mike, um, you know, <laughs> do you see yourself coming back here to play again for the Slingers one day? Uh, definitely. I mean, I, I spent five years out there and um, the organization is, like we've said before, more like a family and, um, you know, I have brothers and, and Delvin and, and my teammates. So uh, definitely a, an, an option and, and uh, something that me and MJ talk about all the time is uh, uh, me getting back in a Slingers jersey and, and playing in front of those fans. So, yeah. Nice. So I'm sure the fans who are watching this out there are probably going to be, <laughs> you know, spamming you on social media and say, come back, you know, come back to the Slingers. <laughs> we would love to have you back. Okay, he, answered so that, he answered that very well. He said the word option rather than definitely. So, <laughs> so that's on you, yeah, Mike, yeah. to look at a new contract. <laughs> he, he threw it back to me. It's an option. But it's, definitely uh, home for me. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know in the comments as well. You, know, you guys who are watching this show, you know, if you have any messages for even Delvin or Xavier, I'm sure they would love to hear from you guys. And I want to go now to Slingers and Insight Look, you know, the mini series the Slingers organization put together during the COVID break. So have really a nice look back at the first 15 years of the ball club. Now, the mini series goes back to where it all started for the Slingers in the Australian NBL and the change to the ASEAN Basketball League. It features all three of the Slingers' final series appearances as well as some of the great community work that the club does off the court. Now, MJ, maybe you can share with me how the series came about, you know, and, and, and everything that, that you guys um, planned for when it came to coming up with this show. Yeah, well, we were approached um, by Sports SG. They were they were giving our grants, um, looking to get some content for their new uh, online channel, Circle TV. So at first, I was a little bit reluctant um, because, again, and obviously, we didn't have everyone here and so forth. But then I thought it was a good idea to put something together. You know, it'd been 15 years, and we we had a hiatus with COVID, so. We agreed to do it. Um, there was a heck of a lot of work involved um, in doing the series. Um, but I think it's, at the end of the day, it was a lot of fun for the players and everyone involved. And it's a great thing for you know, guys that have retired, like Hunbin and Des, to have to show their children when they, when they get older what, the, what they did and, and what the club was all about. And, and even for the guys still playing today, it's something that, that they'll, they'll have for, for all time. Um, you know, we, we did the whole thing in-house. So, you know, please be kind when you were locking it, uh, watching it and not too many negative comments. But I, I think for the most part, it came across pretty well and the guys enjoyed it. And again, it just showed some of the stuff, uh, some of the great opportunities the guys have had overseas, uh, places like Cable Beach and Broome, some of the players they've met, some of the elite uh, famous players they've met and some of the locations and some of the big sporting brands we've been involved with. Plus, and probably even more importantly, the amount of work we do in the community and, and what the guys do uh, giving back to the community, which is awesome. Yeah, that's so important, right? The community engagement of the court and just getting um, involved in, in these kind of initiatives. Um, I'm going to go to you now, Xavier. Um, of course, I have to ask, was it fun for you being part of, of this documentary and, you know, being part of the team, you know, and looking back as well at, at what you've achieved um, in your time in Singapore? Uh, yes, it was definitely fun. Um... You know, coming out, um, what, 10 months ago, I didn't know if, if we were going to play or uh, what we were going to do and, uh, you know, end up doing a lot of coaching in the community and, um, you know, being a part of this documentary. Uh, it was fun for me. Uh, it was something different, you know, being on camera and, um, you know, just talking about the, the old memories and the old finals and stuff like that. It brought back a lot of good memories. Uh, a lot of bad memories as well um but overall it it definitely put in perspective uh what the organization has been able to do over the years nice and delvin what about you did you enjoy as well being part of this process uh i would say yeah because i've been here for quite, quite a long time I've been here for like 11 or 12 years ever since i was 16 so um to be able to look back and uh, know how it all started and then looking at the three finals in four years, looking back at the family that we had, you know, the community work that we did, you know, it's, it's a showcase of things that we've done as an organization, as a player and as a team. And um, I think it's something that you can look back 
although you know some things you don't want to look bad some painful memories <laughs> right there but there's fun times there's happy times but i think when eventually when i retire when i hang it up when i look back it will be something very very meaningful for me so yeah i enjoyed it fantastic and for all of you who have not caught the series yet definitely go again go and check it out because i think it's it's really I would say a nice gift to all you players as well as the fans, right? It's a nice way to sort of cap off the last 15 years and have a walk down memory lane, you know? So whatever it is, I think it's worth checking out. And back to you, Delvin. I wanted to ask as well, before we go to the next part, about how the shift from the Australian NBL to the ASEAN Basketball League has helped the local players. Well, the um, Singapore Slingers have been here for like 15 years, right? And I think um, it helped the national team in a huge way because you get to have like a higher level of competition. You know, the local players are exposed more to like um, imports and everything. And with the imports coming, we learn from them, we compete with them. When you play against people that are of a higher level, you actually improve a lot faster, a lot more. And uh, I think um, the Singapore Slingers have done a very, very good job in helping the locals, and especially when... Um, the organization want to give the local players even more time than all the other teams out there. And um, this gives me and a lot of the other guys a lot of exposure, a lot of learning uh, opportunity. And um, eventually you see that um, we got a medal, a SEA Games medal, bronze medal after 34 years back in 2013. And then we have a repeat of the bronze medal back in 20, 2015 SEA Games back here in Singapore. So it definitely shows how important and uh, how, how much of a help that Singapore Slingers have given to the national team. Yeah, and all the best, guys, because you all will be uh, participating in the SEA Games as well. So I'm sure that the fans, the Singapore fans, will be looking forward to hoping uh, to get a medal as well. <laughs> so now, speaking of fans, they do have a couple of questions for you guys as well regarding this series. So let's read some of the questions from our fans in the comments section. Okay. Question number one, um, how does it feel making this trip down memory lane and reminiscing those moments you've had with the Slingers? Javi, I think you already answered this. Uh, maybe, um, Delvin, you want to take this about how it feels for you? Uh, uh, I think, uh, like I said, just now, it's, it's as much of a happy memories, painful memories, and being able to see, like, you know, a, a few photos of the fans cheering. That's one thing that, you know, that's keeping us going. And uh, without the fan support, you know, sometimes like Xavier said at Taiwan, it can be a bit down and we have to like lift ourselves up and all that. The energy yeah. and all that atmosphere is totally different. So, um, yeah, I mean, being be able to look back at all these memories, it's, it's just incredible. And uh, I'm grateful for the organization, you know, to actually do up this series for us and also for the fans. Okay, Xavier, in one word, how would you describe the Singapore Slingers journey over the past 15 years? Uh, in one word, I would have to say that probably just being inspiring, uh, you know, just um, starting up as a you know small organization. And um, for me, um, like Delvin said, looking at the old pictures and seeing the transformation from the fans and how, you know, having a couple hundred to a couple thousand, you know, uh, I think uh, that's that's very inspiring. And then just what the organization has been able to do, um, you know, with having just the, the straight natural born players and, um, you know, following all the, the, the rules the right way or whatever. I think it's, it's very inspiring to, to see that, you know, with, with a little bit of hard work, with a lot of hard work <laughs> and, and, you know, just having the, the right group of guys around, um, you know, you're able to, uh, you know, transform from, you know, something, you know, that's maybe so small in the community to something that's so big and uh, everyone's looking forward to. So, yeah. Nice. And, and Delvin, um, uh, maybe Xavier, you can answer this as well. Um, or even Mike, um, I wanted to ask, um, was there an episode, all right, the fan wants to know, was there an episode which really hit you guys the hardest emotionally when watching it or even when filming it? It's funny, uh, when I, I shared the, some episodes actually with Xavier and, and Delvin um, to, to get some feedback and whatever, but um, when they saw the episode, uh, our last finals and game five, uh, they, they liked the episode, they just didn't like the ending. So <laughs> as, as far as, 
the rest of the episodes, I mean, the first final is our first final, second final, certain things happen. The third final, we really thought with home court advantage, we, I think we were going to win it. And um, and I think that was pretty devastating for the guys and still is. So although they w- enjoyed the the build up to the final bit, uh, they didn't like the ending, obviously, uh, uh, losing the final. So from that standpoint, that's probably the most disappointing uh, sort of uh, ending to the series uh, where the rest of it's, I think, uh, quite uplifting and, and, and shows all the great work that these guys have done uh, both on and off the court um, in the 15 years. Yeah, I mean, just based on what Mike has said, our next question is actually talking about that uh, finals. Um, and, this, and I guess the disappointment of getting so close to the championship at Delvin. Um, I mean, looking back, um, how was that situation for you? And how long did it take for you guys to actually, you know, be able to overcome it and say, okay, next time we're going to go again? Oh, uh, that finals, I think um, why it hit the hardest was because we were really that close. And I feel like that team was probably one of the best team in the organization I've ever had. And uh, I feel like the chances that we had there was, it was right there for us. Like, um, but I mean, Things happen, and um, it definitely took a while for all of us, you know, to actually like like Xavier said, he put he's gonna spend some time with some time with his head in the pillow and all that, you know. It, it's definitely devastating for us because we know that we are that close, and uh, for me, it just made me hungrier than ever to come out here and to win one for the organization, for myself, and for the fans. So it didn't took me long. It took me probably like one week and I just want to get back in there and start working again. So, yeah. And Xavier, what about you? Do you like uh, a similar sentiments for you as well? You mentioned like sleeping in the pillow for putting your head in the pillow. Is that what you, you did as well? Yeah, I don't I don't know if I'm over it now. Oh, <laughs> wow. No, no. Nah, um, I think for me, uh, it definitely was that last finals. And um, I think, up until that point, um, even the first final, you know, it was it was shocking to everybody, you know, the organization's first finals. And then um, the second, you know, we, we, we had a good team um, and we worked hard to get there. And um, but that third year, I felt like everybody felt like it was ours. You know, the fans, um, our organization, the players, I felt like everybody felt like this was our time, you know, third time's the charm, as they say. Um, and uh, for us not to, uh, you know, come away with that title for whatever reason, um, you know, it was devastating. And uh, filming the documentary, you know, it has my, I mean, it's making my palm sweat right now, like <laughs> just thinking about it. So, yeah, um, it definitely was devastating, but um, there's a lot of positive in it as well. You know, um, the team just being resilient and, you know, continuing to to strive to to be at the top. And, um, you know, three finals in four years, that's not easy, you know. And um, I think we're the only organization to uh, accomplish that. So um, there's a lot of good in it as well. And I think moving on in the future, there's a lot of positives that everyone can take away from um, the series and, um, just kind of what what the organization's been through. <laughs> yeah, I mean, speaking of, of 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 where you guys have been, you know, three finals in four years, as you mentioned. Um, how, what do you think the Slingers program, you know, has been able to achieve, you know, from the initial years, uh, to the Slingers of today? Because clearly, it was a, it was a long pathway to get to where you guys are today, right, Mike? Yeah, well, obviously, at the start, we played in the Australian League, and when you asked uh, Delvin the, the evolution of the Slingers, as part of playing in that. Uh, we had to have eight Australian players and two imports. So that only left space for two development players uh, that were local. So even though the training on a day-to-day basis was great and we brought some of these guys in at a younger age, once we moved to the ASEAN Basketball League, the rules completely changed. So uh, predominantly we could have the majority of our players uh, Singaporean. And with Singapore not having many, you know, American-born Singaporeans or so forth and so on, we, we, we pretty much went, we went with our local kids, our local guys, and, and they, it took a while to establish, and we, we took some pain early on in, in the ABL. We had an initial success, and a couple of years, we, 
missed out on the playoffs. And then um, 2015 is where we, we were able to put the group together um, and, and the involvement of the players and the improvement of the local players started to come to fruition. And, and from that st- stage on, we've been tough. I mean, uh, to make three finals in four years is, as Xavier said, it's, you know, I believe Hun Bin says in the series, if you were to ask him 10 years ago whether we would have made a Singaporean team made up of mainly Singaporeans would make one final, he would have said no, let alone three in four years. Um, and, and so we've achieved a heck of a lot um, and we've evolved. And, and, and it's through giving opportunities to guys like Delvin and, and, and the local players uh, to not only play a lot of minutes, but also to go match up against imports, from the other teams, um, you know, and things like that. There's nowhere to hide and they playing against better competition. They've improved dramatically and, and that success for a lot of it's uh, gone on to the national team as well. So, wow, all those questions were really awesome. Thank you so much, at first, for staying with us till the end of the show and we'd love to give you guys a chance to win some really awesome Slingers merchandise. All you have to do is just answer this question in our comment section and the best answer will walk away with either a Slingers backpack jersey or t-shirt and the question is which episode of the inside look did you enjoy the most and why and of course the best three responses to this will stand a chance to walk away with those really cool merchandise well i hope you guys have enjoyed today's episode of the slingers home court and of course make sure to catch all the episodes of the slingers and inside look on circle tv this is the exciting latest production which tells the story of the slingers franchise their accomplishments and the people who dare to dream. Now, I'd like to thank the Slingers players Delvin Go, David Alexander, as well as Slingers GM Michael Johnson for being part of today's show. Thank you so much, guys. And all the best in Bali. I'll see you guys next time. I'm Ash Hashim. Take care. <laughs>